Hey guys, it's Calvin from the Cartoon Company in New Zealand. While I mainly do 1UZ conversions and wiring, I'm just doing a few quick videos on the setup of a Link ECU. Process works on both G4, G4 Plus. The engine happens to be a 1UZ, because I'm wiring a 1UZ, funnily enough. So far I've done a little bit on the, the basic setup and getting a crank input, showing that. I've calibrated the TPS in the last video, and this one we're going to calibrate the map sensor. The reason for the map sensor is on the link, they don't run an airflow meter or an air mass meter, or a MAF. I'm just going to call them an airflow meter for all of them. So guys might say a flap, is, flap type is an airflow, and then the hot wire is the air mass. Just going to call them all an airflow meter. Bear with me. We're not going to run none of them. We're going to run a map sensor though on the link. Uh, now the monsoon has the map sensor built in. You can still do a calibration and it still should be correct. Otherwise you can find out if it's damaged. On the other ones, they are wired in. Oh, some of the plugins also have built in map sensors. Still should do a calibration just to confirm it's correct. I've wired this one into AN Volt 3. Now the reason for a map sensor is it becomes your primary fuel calculator. So the amount of fuel to put in, it works out how much air is going in relative or the pressure inside the engine, which is how much, so, you, so the computer knows how much fuel to put into the engine. The primary fuel calculator. It's important that it's calibrated correctly. So if it's tuned when it's not calibrated correctly, you'll tune it fine. The problem comes if you want to change your map sensor and you put a different one on and then it sits in different places. So the tuning numbers will be all different. If you change and they both calibrate the same, then the tune will just be like normal and you wouldn't even know a change has been made. And that's why it's important to calibrate your map sensor. It should be pretty obvious to a good tuner if it isn't set in correctly because it does dictate where it sits on the fuel map and ignition map if you're depending on how it's tuned. So let's have a look at a couple of map sensors, all of which can be used. And with the link, you can there are some preset calibrations, and or you can add your own one. So this particular engine, I'll wire it up, has got a 1.15 bar link map sensor on it. It's got a vacuum hose running into it and the Deutsch plug going there. It's got a, a zero volt from the ECU or a ground sensor ground from the ECU, the signal and the five volt. Over here are some others. So there's that style that's going to be screwed into a manifold. Factory style. There's the older link, that's a 2.5 older link. And there's a three bar link one for a, for a boosted engine. So I think first what we're going to do is we're going to calibrate the sensor that's on it. So we'll open up the link software and we'll have a bit of a look. So the first thing we do is we go into the software. And we need to gain communication with the ECU. ECU controls, connect to ECU. And this little bit over here should go online. We need to ensure that the analog input, here it is here, I've wired it to um, AN volt 3. It says map sensor LS1. This loom when it arrived had a different map sensor plug on it. I didn't get the sensor, there's the, there's the plug, so I thought it was a GM one. I'm not a fan of the GM one, though, of course, if you are in America, it does make a lot of sense to run that because they're easily available. So I'm going to change this sensor here. So I've got on AN Volt 3, you can go in and choose what the input is. Pretty much every time I do AN Volt 3 as a map sensor, we're going to change it from LS1. This was meant to be a straightforward video, calibrate map sensor, all good, thank you very much. 
and then show a couple of options. Because it's on the G4 platform and the software is a little bit older, it's not going to play the game quite as easy. But hey, that's aftermarket computers as well. And the setup process, if you go through it, you find little issues. The G4 doesn't have a calibration table for the newer uh, map sensors from Link. No problem. Got a plan. And it'll actually work really well for us. So what I've done is I went and grabbed a Atom. An Atom 2. Same plug. So we've just got the Atom powered up. No map sensor in, in there. Different communication cable, but the pinout is close enough to do what I want it to do. Map sensor there. So I've come into the G4 Plus platform and software, power up the ECU, and connect in just the same as the G4. Brings up this big unlock. Oh no, it's locked. We're not going to worry about that at the moment. So I go to analog inputs. And you can see they're all turned off. We'll just do this. We'll go up here and we'll do map sensor calibration. Yes, I do. And it's failed. That's good. That, that uh, shows the point that I wanted to prove. We're going into AN Vault 3. We're going map sensor. And we're going to put link 1.15 bar. Yes, I must do a calibration. That's what we're doing. Calibrate. Yes, I do want to perform that map sensor calibration. And it says it was successful. So that's now calibrated it. If we go to the tuning map. There's a fuel table. And you'll see it sits down here at 0 RPM and 0 kPa. What I'm just going to do here, going to throw another map sensor on it. We're going to take this one, we're going to take this 3 bar, and we're going to plug it in. And you'll see here, it's sitting in a different part of the map now. And so that's the difference that it makes. So if I just go in, and I go again, and I change that calibration to a link 3 bar, link 3 bar, okay, and I calibrate it. Yes, I do. Hope you guys are keeping up. We go back to the tuning map. See, it's back in the same place. And that's what the calibration's all about. So that calibration is about having, or about reading the correct pressure in that engine. So the fueling is correct. And then when you change sensors, it's all going to work. I have my vacuum pump. I'll put it on the right one, eh? Put it on here. So I'm going to apply some vacuum. Oh, that's quite nice. And you can see on the map that it goes up. The fueling moves up. Of course, we've not got any revs but it's changing in the pressure. And we'll also see a change in the voltage. I get the runtime values, and we go into the analog here. Here's our map sensor voltage. I'll just let that off again. So we're sitting about 1.5, and as I increase, so that's giving it vacuum. I think if I flick it around to here, I can give it some boost. So there's some boost. So I've gone up to 2.7. I can probably give it quite a lot of boost. It's actually gone right off the bottom of my scale there. We've got 3.26 volts, and there it is, about 15, about 100 kPa, which is about 15 PSI, it's dropping back. Right, I'm just going to swap back to that other map sensor.
So we're back on the 1.15 bar map sensor, vacuum line on it. We don't want to give this one boost, vacuum only, 0.15 of a bar. But you'll see here straight away we're well off that table, we're way at the bottom of the table. Before we calibrate it, we better change it to the correct one. 1.15. I will talk about error readings another day. Calibrate that, it's going to calibrate correctly, yes. And we're back in the right place. And we'll give it some vacuum, and up it goes. So with the choice of map sensor, I like to choose one, the smallest map sensor that will do the job. So if I'm using an NA vehicle, around about a one bar. Um, so that's, the first bar is atmosphere. Okay, so that's the atmosphere. So when we talk about a three bar, one bar atmosphere, two bar of boost, 30 PSI. Um, on an NA, I try to keep it around the one bar, right, that one atmosphere, so 1.15 is nice, just over. The LS1 is like a 1.05. Now if you don't have a calibration, you can make it up. You can do some testing to make it work. So what we're actually gonna do in a moment is I'm gonna switch back to the G4 to set up for this wiring loom and we're going to calibrate up a sensor. I found some numbers for it. So we're flicking back to there. Oh, we've got our map sensor on. I really don't want to calibrate the three bar. All right. So we're going back to the G4 platform. Turn the ignition on. Connect to that ECU. Okay, so we've come in to the map sensor. I'm not going to use calibration table one. I'm going to put it on cal table four because that's a very easy table to use. So we'll go to Cal Table 4. Cal Table 4 allows us just to enter the two input voltages and the two output voltages. So I was able to find some voltages for this. So we're going to put in a input value number 1 of 0.65 volts, not 65. 0.65 and that gives us a 25 kPa output value and we're going to output B input B we're going to go 4.7 and that's going to give us 1 1 5 kPa we're going to store that and we'll do a calibration. Yes, I do want to do a calibration and it is co co correct. Now, if we're actually going to look at that a little bit, uh, if we look at some runtime values, right now we're at uh, 3.78 volts. I'll just give it some vacuum that's around about 25 there if we look in the screen it was about 0.7 so I got it pretty close so that map sensor is now calibrated for that ECU we better save it store the ECU so that map sensor is now calibrated to our ECU using the cal table Real simple, does help when you can get um, the calibration figures. 
and we're going to do a calibration later on on oil pressure as well so i'll show you how to do that for now hope that's been helpful and we'll talk to you later